You fool! Warren is dead. Welcome to Horror Babble. Something a little off the wall today, folks. A recording of The Girl Without Hands, the classic German fairy tale collected by the Brothers Grimm. It was first published in the 1812 edition of Children's and Household Tales. How do you feel about fairy tale and fantasy horror crossovers in general? Let us know in the comments below. And without further ado... The Girl Without Hands by Wilhelm and Jacob Grimm A certain miller had little by little fallen into poverty, and had nothing left but his mill and a large apple tree behind it. Once when he had gone into the forest to fetch wood, an old man stepped up to him whom he had never seen before, and said, Why dost thou plague thyself with cutting wood? I will make thee rich, if thou wilt promise me what is standing behind thy mill. What can that be but my apple tree? thought the miller, and said, Yes, and gave a written promise to the stranger. He, however, laughed mockingly, and said, When three years have passed, I will come and carry away what belongs to me. And then he went. When the miller got home, his wife came to meet him and said, Tell me, miller, from whence comes this sudden wealth into our house? All at once every box and chest was filled. No one brought it in, and I know not how it happened. He answered, It comes from a stranger who met me in the forest, and promised me great treasure. I, in return, have promised him what stands behind the mill. We can very well give him the big apple tree for it. Ah, husband, said the terrified wife, that must have been the devil. He did not mean the apple tree, but our daughter, who was standing behind the mill, sweeping the yard. The miller's daughter was a beautiful, pious girl, and lived through the three years in the fear of God and without sin. And therefore the time was over, and the day came when the evil one was to fetch her. She washed herself clean, and made a circle round herself with chalk. The devil appeared quite early, but he could not come near to her. Angrily he said to the miller, Take all water away from her, that she may no longer be able to wash herself, for otherwise I have no power over her. The miller was afraid, and did so. The next morning the devil came again, but she had wept on her hands, and they were quite clean. Again he could not get near her, and furiously said to the miller, Cut her hands off, or else I cannot get the better of her. The miller was shocked and answered, How could I cut off my own child's hands? Then the evil one threatened him, and said, If thou dost not do it, thou art mine, and I will take thee thyself. The father became alarmed, and promised to obey him. So he went to the girl, and said, My child, if I do not cut off both thine hands, the devil will carry me away, and in my terror... I have promised to do it. Help me in my need, and forgive me the harm I do thee. She replied, Dear father, do with me what you will. I am your child. Thereupon she laid down both her hands, and let them be cut off. The devil came for the third time, but she had wept so long and so much on the stumps, that after all they were quite clean. Then he had to give in and had lost all right over her. The miller said to her, I have by means of thee received such great wealth, that I will keep thee most delicately as long as thou livest. But, she replied, Here I cannot stay. I will go forth. Compassionate people will give me as much as I require. Thereupon she caused her maimed arms to be bound to her back, and by sunrise she set out on her way and walked the whole day until night fell. Then she came to a royal garden, 
and by the shimmering of the moon she saw that trees covered with beautiful fruits grew in it, but she could not enter, for there was much water round about it. And as she had walked the whole day and not eaten one mouthful, and hunger tormented her, she thought, Ah, if I were but inside, that I might eat of the fruit, else must I die of hunger. Then she knelt down, called on God the Lord, and prayed. And suddenly an angel came towards her, who made a dam in the water, so that the moat became dry, and she could walk through it. And now she went into the garden, and the angel went with her. She saw a tree covered with beautiful pears, but they were all counted. Then she went to them, and to still her hunger, ate one with her mouth from the tree, but no more. The gardener was watching, but as the angel was standing by, he was afraid, and thought the maiden was a spirit, and was silent. Neither did he dare to cry out or to speak to the spirit. When she had eaten the pear, she was satisfied, and went and concealed herself among the bushes. The king to whom the garden belonged came down to it next morning, and counted, and saw that one of the pears was missing, and asked the gardener what had become of it, as it was not lying beneath the tree, but was gone. Then answered the gardener, Last night a spirit came in, who had no hands, and ate off one of the pears with its mouth. The king said, How did the spirit get over the water, and where did it go after it had eaten the pear? The gardener answered, Someone came in a snow-white garment from heaven, who made a dam, and kept back the water, that the spirit might walk through the moat. And as it must have been an angel her, I was afraid, and asked no questions, and did not cry out. When the spirit had eaten the pear, it went back again. The king said, If it be as thou sayest, I will watch with thee tonight. When it grew dark, the king came into the garden, and brought a priest with him, who was to speak to the spirit. All three seated themselves beneath a tree, and watched. At midnight, the maiden came creeping out of the thicket, went to the tree, and again ate one pear off it with her mouth, and beside her stood the angel in white garments. Then the priest went out to them and said, Comest thou from heaven or from earth? Art thou a spirit or a human being? She replied, I am no spirit, but an unhappy mortal deserted by all but God. The king said, If thou art forsaken by all the world, yet will I not forsake thee. He took her with him into his royal palace, and as she was so beautiful and good, he loved her with all his heart, had silver hands made for her, and took her to wife. After a year the king had to take the field, so he commended his young queen to the care of his mother, and said, If she is brought to bed, take care of her, nurse her well, and tell me of it at once in a letter. Then she gave birth to a fine boy. So the old mother made haste to write and announced the joyful news to him, but the messenger rested by a brook on the way, and as he was fatigued by the great distance, he fell asleep. Then came the devil, who was always seeking to injure the good queen, and exchanged the letter for another, in which was written that the queen had brought a monster into the world. When the king read the letter, he was shocked and much troubled, but he wrote in answer that they were to take great care of the queen, and nurse her well until his arrival. The messenger went back with the letter, but rested at the same place and again fell asleep. Then came the devil once more, and put a different letter in his pocket, in which it was written that they were to put the queen and her child to death. The old mother was terribly shocked when she received the letter, and could not believe it. She wrote back again to the king, but received no other answer, because each time the devil substituted a false letter, and in the last letter it was also written that she was to preserve the queen's tongue and eyes as a token that she had obeyed. But the old mother wept to think such innocent blood was to be shed, and had a hind brought by night, and cut out her tongue and eyes, and kept them. Then she said to the queen, I cannot have thee killed as the king commands, but here thou mayst stay no longer. Go forth into the wide world with thy child, and never come here again. 
the poor woman tied her child on her back and went away with eyes full of tears. She came into a great wild forest, and then she fell on her knees and prayed to God, and the angel of the Lord appeared to her and led her to a little house, on which was a sign with the words, Here all dwell free. A snow-white maiden came out of the little house and said, Welcome, Lady Queen, and conducted her inside. Then they unbound the little boy from her back, and held him to her breast that he might feed, and laid him in a beautifully made little bed. Then said the poor woman, From whence knowest thou that I was a queen? The white maiden answered, I am an angel sent by God, to watch over thee and thy child. The queen stayed seven years in the little house, and was well cared for, and by God's grace, because of her piety, her hands which had been cut off, grew once more. At last the king came home again from the war, and his first wish was to see his wife and the child. Then his aged mother began to weep, and said, Thou wicked man! Why didst thou write to me that I was to take those two innocent lives? And she showed him the two letters which the evil one had forged, and then continued, I did as thou badest me. And she showed the tokens, the tongue and eyes. Then the king began to weep for his poor wife and his little son so much more bitterly than she was doing, that the aged mother had compassion on him, and said, Be at peace, she still lives. I secretly caused a hind to be killed, and took these tokens from it, but I bound the child to thy wife's back, and bade her go forth into the wide world, and made her promise never to come back here again, because thou wert so angry with her. Then spoke the king, I will go as far as the sky is blue, and will neither eat nor drink, until I have found again my dear wife and my child, if in the meantime they have not been killed or died of hunger. Thereupon the king travelled about for seven long years, and sought her in every cleft of the rocks and in every cave, but he found her not, and thought she had died of want. During the whole of this time he neither ate nor drank, but God supported him. At length he came into a great forest, and found there in the little house whose sign was, Here all dwell free. Then forth came the white maiden, took him by the hand, led him in, and said, Welcome, Lord King, and asked him from whence he came. He answered, Soon shall I have travelled about for the space of seven years, and I seek my wife and her child, but cannot find them. The angel offered him meat and drink, but he did not take anything, and only wished to rest a little. Then he lay down to sleep, and put a handkerchief over his face. Thereupon the angel went into the chamber where the queen sat with her son, whom she usually called Sorrowful, and said to her, Go out with thy child, thy husband hath come. So she went to the place where he lay, and the handkerchief fell from his face. Then said she, Sorrowful, pick up thy father's handkerchief and cover his face again. The child picked it up and put it over his face again. The king in his sleep heard what passed, and had pleasure in letting the handkerchief fall once more. But the child grew impatient, and said, Dear mother, how can I cover my father's face, when I have no father in this world? I have learned to say the prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, thou hast told me that my father was in heaven, and was the good God, and how can I know a wild man like this? He is not my father. When the king heard that, he got up and asked who they were. Then said she, I am thy wife, and that is thy son, Sorrowful. And he saw her living hands, and said, My wife had silver hands. She answered, The good God has caused my natural hands to grow again. And the angel went into the inner room, and brought the silver hands, and showed them to him. Hereupon he knew for a certainty, that it was his dear wife and his dear child. And he kissed them, and was glad, and said, A heavy stone has fallen from off mine heart. Then the angel of God gave them one meal with her, and after that they went home to the king's aged mother. There were great rejoicings everywhere, and the king and queen were married again, and lived contentedly, 
to their happy end. If you enjoyed listening today, be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red subscribe button below. After doing so, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to receive new content notifications. If you'd like to support our work and receive exclusive perks, consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button below. To support us in other ways, see the video description for links to our Bandcamp and Patreon pages, our merch store over at Teespring, and further information relating to our releases on Audible, iTunes, and Spotify. And until next time.